Hi, John Fugler here. Let's spend a few minutes retreating with God. This uh, theme of rest this week, coming down to the end of the week, and this is something (laughs) I really enjoy talking about, all right? Particularly this day's topic. It's about our devices, okay? You know where I'm going with this. When it comes to getting rest for our souls these days, has God left us to our own devices? Actually, I think he wants us to put them to rest so we can rest our devices. That's today's biggest enemy to rest. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, We've heard the statistics. The average person spends over 75 minutes on social media each day, and that number is rising. Nearly a half hour texting. 25 minutes on email, 15 minutes playing games, and that's just soaring also. And the rest of the time on calls and apps for a total of over four hours a day. The biggest time waster used to be TV. Now it's whatever we want it to be on our phone. We've also heard the health warnings. The more people use their phones, Dr. Nancy Cheever, researcher at Cal State Dominguez Hills, told ABC News, the more anxious they are about using their phone. (laughs) People are anxious with their devices in hand. It seems like we're anxious without them too. When we don't have our phone with us, we're afraid we'll miss a text. We, We don't want to be excluded from important information. And as a result, we have some sort of device detachment syndrome. Honestly, I am not immune to this. I have my phone with me all the time, checking it often for a number of reasons. I don't really do Facebook. It makes me anxious. But I have an abundance of other choices, like making sure the weather forecast hasn't changed in the last half hour, or my favorite team is still playing tomorrow night, or not missing any breaking news, or a super-duper urgent text hasn't escaped my attention. And once I have all that settled, I'm at peace, and I can rest. Not quite. Not quite, because 10 minutes later, I have to recheck all those sources. No wonder I can't rest. I hope you're squirming right now. Uh, I am, I am, as I confess, my device dependence. So, on the count of three, let's both slide our phones across the floor like we're a criminal surrendering a magnum to the police. Okay? You ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Slide that phone across the floor. If you got a second one concealed under your pant leg, slide that one too. I know this conversation is amusing, but the reality is not. How much time do we fail to rest because thanks to our phones, we can't shut down. We can't relax. It's tragic. Doesn't it make God sad? He sees us chasing our tails and beckons us to slow down, to pause, stop, and rest. Uh, On some phones, you can see a screen time report. How horrible. It shows us like a mirror how dependent we are on our devices. Imagine if you spent just 10% of that time resting. 10% of your phone time. Give it away. Tithe it to the Lord. Rest with God. Yeah, tithe your screen time to God. Well, Now that I've got you rattled here, (laughs) I'll let you decide your next step. I can't tell you how to take back some of the rest time from your device, but God can. Slide your device across the floor and spend the next few minutes consulting with the Lord. We'll do it together here, okay, as we go deeper. And uh, I know I'm stepping on toes, but hey, let's do that. I'll just step a little bit harder. We're going to read Psalm 130, verses 5 and 6. And Speaking of rest, I'd love you to rest with the Lord more often, and I would challenge you for the next 21 days to spend an additional 20 minutes with God. Make it 21. For 21 days, spend an additional 21 minutes with the Lord. And I've got a tool for you that I've talked about every single time together, and it's called the 21-Day Fresh Faith Experience. You can download this free resource to help you go deeper with Jesus. The 21 Day Fresh Faith Experience at retreatingwithgod.org. Make it part of your rest time. Time to get alone with God. You can even print it out so you don't have to read it on your phone. Okay? Retreatingwithgod.org. Let's go deeper into Psalm 130, verses 5 and 6. 
Very simple passage here. Are you ready? I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. Again, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. Let's reflect. What things stand out in this passage? Do I see anything new about God, or does this passage reinforce something I already know about Him? The answer to this next reflective question is pretty obvious. What is the theme or message of this passage? And we got some key application questions about the passage and You may have direct or indirect answers. This is a neat thing uh, as we come together like this, that the spirit just really moves in your heart, I hope. And I may ask a question, the Lord brings something else to mind or something related to mind. So that may happen in these questions. So the first one is, is there a sin for me to avoid? Is there a command for me to obey? Think about this one for a bit. Is there an example for me to follow? then the final most important question. In what way or ways do I know the Father or Jesus better as a result of reflecting on this passage? Let's relate to God. And um, just a reminder, too, that if I'm going through the questions too quickly and the Lord really lays something on your heart, all you gotta do is push pause. Just push pause and uh, think, reflect, pray, whatever you need to do as the, the Lord touches your heart on the reflection questions. So let's relate to God. Let's pray. As a result of reflecting on the passage, take time to pray about the things God has brought to your mind. And uh, this is a time where you get to relate to God and enjoy a conversation with him. It's also a time to bring to God the request you came with when you first sat down with him. So let's do that now. Spend time in prayer, and then I'll close us.
I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchman for the morning. More than watchman for the morning. Lord, will you make me a man who waits for you? Puts my hope in you? I pray for my brothers and sisters that you would be our focus. All of us would focus on you. That these devices that we have, Lord, we would cast them aside so we can spend time focusing on you, that we would take time with you and enjoy this time with you. We would wait on you. We would hope in you and in your word. Lord, build that in us, new habits, new ways, new way of life. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Mm, It's been a good week of rest. Continue in this, continue in this, and use the 21-day Fresh Faith Experience as your tool, your resource to launch into the next 21 days. Go get it at retreatingwithgod.org. Philippians 3.8, I love uh, this whole theme of, of knowing Christ because that was Paul's mission in life. And he said so twice. Philippians 3.8 says, What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. And then two verses later, he says, I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in in his sufferings. That's one man who wanted to know Jesus so deep, so deeply. And I hope and pray that you would and that I would as well. Retreating with God is a ministry of fresh faith 24-7, a place where you can retreat with God and get to know him more deeply. You can find out more at freshfaith247.com. Have a great weekend.